So it's all about inside out. Tip controlled by Florida. This is Corey Brewer at 6'9", a very quick and slashing player. Torian Green at the point. Well, against Butler, we mentioned, JB, the dilemma you have trying to guard the big guys inside. Do you do it one-on-one? -on -one? Nice matchup here with uh, Torian Green, who drops in the... Gator fans, and it really will help the inside game go if he can stretch the deep. Florida's big men can defend on the perimeter. This is Lunen taking Joe Kim Noah down low. Block the favor return by Noah. Well, that's a message heard loud and clear. See what effect that has on Luna. Brooks, the Ducks will make. You saw the shot of Billy Donovan, who's done a masterful job of keeping his team focused all season despite a little slump. And a good move. Lanes to the basket. Roar with the height advantage on Taylor. Good spin move. I tell you what. He's going to come in, and if you look at how far in the corners Lee Humphrey and others go to try to create more room. Porter, See, that's where it's dangerous. Noah with the rebound. Torian Green pushing it up for the Gators. Lee Humphrey banging it home from the corner. Looking to get some isolations with their quickness on the perimeter, even with their foot forward. Taking their time with the offensive set. Brooks looking to work on Green. Brooks much more determined today. Off the mark, though, rebounded by Horford. Green up to Brewer. Size, score. And size and explosiveness. Corey Brewer literally jumped over to one. Oh, good move. Team in for Florida, the young man from Puerto Rico. And this is the Florida depth that we're talking about. They got about nine guys that can come in and play. This is last year where he was kind of the, the media and public darling. A lot of teams, a lot of campuses, if you will, certainly have uh, treated him just the opposite. Harrison, strong move to the back. Horford, 17 of 21 together at the free throw line on Friday night against Butler. Luna, nice pass down low to Catron, back to the corner. And Taylor, who had a big, some of his bigs who don't get much playing time. Well, that's quite a battle between big Catron and big Chris Richards for Florida. Lee Humphrey. They get good perimeter pressure by Oregon. Mm -hmm. And that really prevents the straight in entry passes, makes those entry passes down low much more difficult. See the hook pass by Humphrey right there. Which is a nice pass to Richard, and Richard with a little jump hook. But, you know, he's a, he's a dancer. Reminiscent of back in the day, Lynn. <laughs> I think you can move pretty well on the floor. Nice move down low for Harrison. He's got a nice. Chris Richard working on the inside to free himself. Torian Green from the outside. Torian Green dropping home to three. He's got six. Florida on top by one. And again, Torian Green playing with much more offensive confidence right now. I think that game against Butler where it's five or eight from beyond the arc has really given him a lift. Stolen. Humphrey. And that was a case of Bryce Taylor not get a layup. Lee Humphrey normally known for hitting threes. Your thoughts about the ebb and flow of this game so far, Len? Well, obviously the quickness of Oregon early had some impact on Florida, but now Florida's gotten their sea legs, so to speak, and they're starting to utilize their size advantage right there, changing a the shot by Malik Harrison. Position himself nicely. I really... Florida out of position, and then he exploits it. Defense of the Ducks trying to keep the big guys off the blocks. Not a good job there. And Joe Kent, who he will be trying to, Ernie Kent, get some minutes and even some fouls from to step the basket nicely to Shield. Seeing some pretty quality fundamental post plays so far. And there's the back down by the Godfather. Oh, yeah. 20 left in the first half of play. Three point Gators lead. Horford. Back to Humphrey. Humphrey. Those are the guys who wind up closing on him. And you talk about a backspin. That backspin tore up that net. Yeah, they've kind of floated in and out of that to give Oregon different looks. It kind of slows the pace a little bit, and it really takes away from the driving lane for the guard. Except if you're Malik Harris. Yeah, they've kind of floated in and out of that to give Oregon different looks. It kind of slows the pace a little bit, and it really takes away from the driving lane for the guard.
except if you're Malik Harrison penetrating and dishing to Brooks, you can still employ man-to-man -man principles against that zone, and they got into the open pockets that time. 33-29, Florida on top. 3-29 left in the first half of play. Horford. Loose ball picked up. This is Bryce Taylor. Ahead to Schaefer. Back out to Porter. Will he connect? Still has yet to find the mark. Taylor with the rebound attempt. Kept alive. Taylor with the loose ball. A fresh 35. And a deep three. What about Harrison has already delivered for the Ducks. One point gain. Torian Green. Rebounded by Chris Richard, again, emphasizing the height advantage. This is Humphrey, boy, is he on the mark? First 11 and a half minutes and wound up with 33 points. So, you know, he's a little bit of dynamite right there, just looking for a spark. Meanwhile, Brooks is providing with 12 points, and it's a two-point lead by Florida. Humphrey off the back of the iron. Loose ball controlled by Porter. Here comes the man nicknamed Mighty Mouse. Kicks it out to Taylor. Rebounded by Torian Green. But you know what? That's the way Oregon has to play. They've got to take advantage of the perimeter. But it's Torian Green and the Gators. The green at his size can get his shot anytime he wants over the 5 6 quarter. Humphrey in and out. Boy, he is right there on the mark. Good tip of the loose ball by Porter ahead to Taylor. Porter right now switched off on the Lee Humphrey. And again, given all of those challenges, the Ducks trailing by only two. Brewer inside to Noah. That's where or he'll wait for his guard to draw his man, and then he makes himself available. And Lunen did that. Harrison defending Brewer. Brewer doing a nice job. I tell you, see if the Ducks can get something going on the offensive end. And look at the job as Horford trying to do on Porter, who blows by him, kicks it out to Brooks with a wide open three. That already Lunen. And three on Jovan Catron, the big men for the Ducks. And it's 17-18 left in the second half. Brewer. Rebounded strong by Bryce Taylor. Good block out. Absolutely. Joe Kim Noah has kept Noah off of his shot. On the inbounds. They were in his zone on the last possession. And again, it forces Florida to stand and take a look. Green. Oh boy, Green is having 13. And did you see Thuan Porter throw his hands up in the air when Green hit that shot? As I said, that's really bothering him. And as well as Porter was bothered on that shot by the bigs of Florida. This is Green. Torian Green. Boy, he's in a... Got a number of guys with three personal fouls. Four guys with three personals. And Humphrey continuing to let him go for the Gators. They're up 55-49. to the basket. Fourth personal foul on Jovan Catron, Marty Loon back in the game, and Jordan Noah working his way and using his height nicely over Malik Harrison. This is the challenge now for the Ducks and Ernie Kent. Again, with guys in foul trouble, nine points, seven rebounds for Joe Kim Noah, displaying patience out there. Harrison ah! kept alive by Bryce tonight for 33 against the Rebs of UNLV. Nice pass, Brewer into Noah. Noah over top of the smaller. Harrison won't be on the bench too long as the team is trailing 61-57. Ernie Kent being challenged now in terms of the tactical moves to make. Humphrey, boy, has he been on fire in the game. And conversely, the orange-clad Gator fans standing up, they start to smell a little bit of blood here, and they want their team to start to put Oregon away. And the man who's been drawn to blood has been that guy, Lee Humphrey. His seventh three. Orion Green to five in white defensively for the Gators. Lunan for three. See if the Ducks can pick up the tempo. Good hands by Joe Kim Noah, showing again the versatility of the big men of Florida being able to play out on the perimeter. That was a backcourt violation. Five-point lead by the Gators. Stolen by Harrison. His elbow, meanwhile, 
Walter Hodge at the free throw line for the Gators to sophomore year and a very good on the ball defender. Misses the second. Here comes Brooks. Here comes Brooks. 70 62. Five minutes left in regulation. Brooks. But the big guys again of Florida doing a nice job of covering the paint. Harrison, Bryce Taylor, Chamberlain, Okuchi, Aaron Brooks, and Marty Luna in the five in black defensively for the Ducks. And again, one on one situations now. Florida has to recognize and take their time and get Four it to the on the guy. shot clock, and who better to put it in the hands of than Lunan? Foul down on this. Horford. Brooks, Lunan, Taylor, Tawan Porter, and Chamberlain Oguchi, the five in black for the Ducks. And Brooks loses it out of bounds. What an excellent effort on the part of the Ducks. Florida averaging 79 points, nearly 80 points a game on the season. And the shooters at least Porter for a period of time, although Porter again with some open looks. Again, he's a freshman. He'll have another shot at it next year. Mm -hmm. Two misses by Horford. And look at Humphrey again, bothering Porter all the way. And Porter continuing to play hard with a nice pass down. 10 on the glass this afternoon certainly has helped their cause tremendously. Horford out high, defended by Lunan. 134 left in regulation. Brewer, jumper from the corner. Joe Kim Noah trying to keep it alive, does an excellent job. Talk about it. I'll elaborate in a second as Noah knocks home to develop NBA talent. He's accomplished all but two. Not quite over, three possession ball game. And believe it or not, Florida has, has not scored a field goal in the last seven minutes. Chamberlain Oguchi. We have Lee Humphrey, who's only nine of 12, as I mentioned, over a thousand points. Hall of Fame basketball player chat with him as well. Uh, Billy Charles for the Gators with 23. And I'm sure Jerry West had some pearls of wisdom to disseminate to them. Yeah, I'm sure he did. 55 seconds left. 77 69. Three from the corner off the mark. Loose ball picked up by Joe Kim Noah. And he's fouled by Jovan Catron. Bounds for Noah. That. And it works for him. Six of seven at the line. I'd say it works. Brooks blowing by. Porter. First three is against the team that his father was coaching at the time, Florida Atlantic. He makes that one, but Florida has missed 13 at the line. 27 seconds left. Just blocked by Brewer. Did matter in the case of point lead by the Gators. Make it seven with 24.2 left. You kind of think when Brooks drives that his shooters would get in at least some sight lines where he can see them. And, oh, here he goes again. Green drops it in with 19. 11 seconds left. TP. Travel. They call him for a walk. Their game in the championship battle last year. And as I said, a new use you'll have to do against the size advantage that the Gators present and the talent that they present. But Florida right now, just a team that knows how to win. Well, Florida got 44 points from his backcourt as there's one more foul committed with 1.4 remaining. 44 points from the backcourt of the Gators. Billy Dunham's team got it done. Lee Humphrey with 23. Torian Green with 21. The backcourt for Billy Donovan got it done today. So the Gators will get back to the Final Four. The first defending champion to get back to the Final Four in back-to-back -back seasons, as we mentioned, since Michigan State did it in 2001. And looking to repeat and become the first team to do that since the Blue Devils of Duke did it in the 91-92 season. Brewer, short. Well, the Buckeyes of Ohio State are already there. UCLA is there. 
Pencil Florida in, actually put him in in ink. The third piece of the puzzle is there. The final piece will come up with the winner of the Georgetown North Carolina game.